I'm Chitra Bhanu and uh, uh, generally for every, any any topic, I have lots of doubts every time. So this time Swamiji has uh, agreed to make me the host for uh, asking questions. So I hope uh, some of my questions will be uh, addressed today. Uh, I mean, they have been addressed all the time, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm like uh, very fortunate to be the one who is asking at the forefront today. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Swamiji, for this opportunity. We will have uh, Shantipad. Yeah. Please sit in any comfortable meditative posture with your hands on your knees in Jnan or Chin Mudra, head, neck, shoulders, back, all in a straight line, eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Awareness of your head, neck, shoulders, arms, chest, upper back, abdomen, lower back, hips, legs, the whole body. Shift your awareness to your breath. Normal, continuous breathing coupled with awareness. I am breathing in and I am breathing out. And I know I am aware that I am breathing in. I know I am aware I am breathing out. Let this be the form of your awareness for some time. Shift your awareness to your breath, uh, to your eyebrow center, Bhrumadhyaya. And at the Bhrumadhyaya, become aware of the image of the Guru Tattva in the form of a Jyoti, the one which dispels the darkness. And maintaining your awareness on this image, we shall chant the mantra Om three times together, followed by the Shanti mantras. Taking in a deep breath. Om. Together. Om Sahana Vavato Sahana Bhunakto Sahavir Yankaravavahai Tejas Vinavadi Tamasto Mavid Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Gently rub your palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. And then experience the warmth radiating from your palms to your eyes, to the brain, to the whole body. And then when comfortable, gently move the palms away and open your eyes. Ariyom. Satsat, Namo Narayan, Jai. So a very warm welcome to all the participants and the delegates who have assembled here on the occasion, on the eve of Gita Jain. 
over to you chitra you are muted you are muted thank you swami ji uh, namo narayan everyone again uh, so a pertinent question about geeta swami ji on a lighter note we see geeta most of the times uh, during the oath taking ceremony in parliaments you know during uh, court scenes in movies so uh, you know uh, though we have so many other scriptures in our uh, culture why is geeta the one on which everybody takes oath for all their commitments shall we start our conversation with this it's a very nice question i like this tell me what happens in a court room um, arguments arguments there has been some there has been some tussles there has okay. some uh, violence there has been some fighting correct good and bad now uh, good and bad true now tell me which of the scriptures anywhere in the world not only in india has been written or been not written but been elucidated told in the battlefield nothing else nothing this is the only scripture where stuff is happening all over you are not in the comfort of your room you don't have anything to refer to oh let me have a look at no 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 it is a do or die situation at that time what is it which will save you at that time what is it which will uplift you and that is the reason why geeta is generally chosen and that is also the reason why geeta has such a great prominence in the world today not just india the world entire world is going gaga for geeta thank you swami ji uh, that's a very uh... interesting uh, perspective about geeta so having said that uh, we all know that it has been told during mahabharata war and then uh, during the war i mean uh, if it it was supposed to be if it was supposed to have taken place many many years ago many many hundreds of thousands of years ago uh, but we still feel that it is relevant for all our things today for all our thought processes uh, i i am amazed at the fact that it is relevant in a world where we have so many vices and virtues in terms of social media internet uh, cell phones uh, which were none of these were existing when it was originally written or you know when it was originally uh, said so what makes it so special and relevant today in spite of uh, the fact that it was told in 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 the time when nothing of this was even perceived or conceived tell me you spoke of virtues and vices okay so do you mean to say that the virtues and vices came along only after the advent of the mobiles and the smartphones and the gizmos and the gadgets no uh, everything will have its own virtue and vice according to the way we use it mm -hmm. even the so, gadgets uh, where, where do virtues and vices grow in human mind in the human mind it's very rightly spoken which means that the virtues or vices they are the responses which we provide to people correct so when we are providing people a response then what happens when we are providing people a response then it is the mind which responds appropriately or inappropriately so if the mind responds inappropriately then there is something which is the result is inappropriate and when a result is inappropriate then it is considered to be a vice when the result the action yeah. the result but the action um, yeah. when the action is considered to be appropriate 
as seen across various areas then it becomes obvious it is in harmony it is in sync and then that becomes a virtue so virtues and vices they are a product of the mind it is the mind which gets attracted to something which it knows is not beneficial in fact just recently i have spoken about this lord krishna spoke to duryodhana and you know they were uh, having an informal open heart to heart talk and at that time lord krishna said bhai duryodhan ye sab kahe ke liye jhagda janjat karte ho sab cheez kyon karte ho tum to itne padhe likhe ho you are such a learned person you have read all these stuff you know so many things why do you do all these things and do you know what uh, duryodhan replied he said janami dharmam nachame pravrutti janamya dharmam nachame nivrutti means i know this is the dharma this is the correct thing to be done but my mind does not go there i know this is inappropriate but my mind does not move away from there so what do i do that is the main problem in today's times in yesterday's times in 5000 years ago times and maybe even 5000 years ahead times the problems will be the same because the mind is going to be the same if you put in a seed and put all the necessary ingredients the tree or the sapling is the seed is going to germinate and the saplings are going to come up but if any of these factors are not going to work it is not going to come up so if you put in a seed today you put in a seed after 5 years put in a seed after 500 years this process is going to be the same you have oxygen you have hydrogen they undergo a reaction they are going to form hydrogen dioxide they are not going to form carbon dioxide can can it form carbon dioxide say after 5000 years will it form car- carbon dioxide no no it is still going to form hydrogen dioxide no it's not hydrogen dioxide it is dihydrogen yeah, it oxide di- uh, it is dihydrogen oxide so uh, this is something which we must understand that the bhagavad gita addresses stuff at the substratum level the mind it is the mind which is being addressed it is the behavior of the mind which is being addressed and the solutions are they are, they evolve out they are not uh, prescribed okay you are having this problem do such so and so no the knowledge is presented and in the end bhagwan says now you do as you please i have told you i have placed everything in front of you now you do as you please that is the reason why the bhagavad gita is relevant at all times because it addresses the problems which the mind faces yeah uh, very well said swami ji i understand that uh, it is about the core that it addresses and uh, actually this leads to my next question swami ji uh, you know in the end you said bhagwan said that i have placed everything in front of you and it is up to you to take what is the solution of your problem so uh, it is all often said that bhagavad gita is interpreted by various people in various ways uh, so i think these two are in some way connected can you please throw some light on what are the various interpretations and uh, which one is most closest to your heart i think uh, i will have to go and get some torch light and then only i can you know shed that light over here 
but there is a lot uh, of light swami ji but uh, which one is relevant not. you have to tell yes so for that we first need to understand what the bhagavad gita is all about the bhagavad gita we need to understand the background and we need to understand how it started i mentioned to you that the bhagavad gita is a text which was elucidated which was which unfolded in the battleground correct and if you read the bhagavad gita you will see that it is not merely a text of scriptural knowledge but it is a text of yoga at the end of every adhyaya you say it is shrimad bhagavad gita su upanishad su brahma vidyayam yoga shastre yoga shastre shri krishna arjuna samvade arjuna vishad sankhya yog karma yog all come in yogo nama prathamo dvitiyo tritiyo dhyaya so this is a text on yoga and for practitioners of yoga what is yoga what does maharshi patanjali say what is yoga the most in today's times very famous everybody knows about it anybody we have many people who have attended the patanjal yoga swadhyay somebody yoga chitta vidhi uh, nirodha ha ah, yoga chitta vritti nirodha right so this is a text which has been told to block the tendencies of the mind and when we look at the tendencies of the mind usually we think that okay please sit in a comfortable posture eyes closed and then you will meditate on the eyebrow center and then you will go in blah 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 but here bhagwan is telling something totally different he is saying get up fight get up fight what does that indicate we need to spend some time to actually understand what this indicates and we need to know what has happened there was a time in history when there were two brothers the mahabharata story predates even the two brothers but there were two brothers and then there was a rift between them one of them followed one path the other followed another path and you had five pandavas who came and we have 100 kauravas who came they fought and pandavas emerged victorious but is it just a story in the history or is it a story which takes place within us day in and day out the dharma kshetra the kuru kshetra is in here the demonic tendencies or the tendencies which work based on the whims and fancies of the mind are the kauravas and the satvik tendencies which work on the basis of what is appropriate what is necessary what is correct are the pandavas and there is always a fight going on between these two is do we not have so many conflicts in our lives oh i i would i am having diabetes i know i should not eat sugar or uh, sh- you know sweet products but the moment i walk through from a sweet sweet meat shop oh i will really just today is a cheat day i you know i will why is it i know it is not good for me जानामि धर्मम न च मे प्रवृत्ति जानाम्य धर्मम न च मे निवृत्ति दैट मींस दैट कॉन्फ्लिक्ट इज अलाइव विद इन अस इवन टुडे 
and as long as this conflict is alive within us the story of mahabharat the story of bhagavad gita is going to be alive and relevant because it is that problem which is being addressed it is not just a historical event through the historical event some subtle knowledge has been passed over to us so that we can fight that knowledge and for me what swami ji has said i feel is perhaps the most relevant interpretation and that interpretation swami ji has given in three simple words blueprint of life the bhagavad gita is the blueprint of life of course he has then spoken much more but the most important point to re- remember is that this is the blueprint of life how should i live life not just spiritual life life in toto that is crucial that is very very important if you have an engineer and you tell that engineer okay please build the house what is it the first thing he is going to say okay show me the blueprint i will make the house according to that so the blueprint of the house is needed and looking at the blueprint he prepares and suppose there was something which structure which was already present by some previous engineer then he will say before i work ahead please let me verify that is it in tune with the blueprint because if it is not in tune with the blueprint there is going to be an accident this is the blueprint of life and mind you this blueprint begins with what is the first chapter of yoga in bhagavad gita Uh, vishada yoga swami ji uh, arjuna vishada yoga ha and what does that mean in english a uh, matlab um, sadness swami ji he was very sad that's why he uh, no okay sadness is a too mild a word okay okay arjun's uh, arjun's uh, conundrum or the the sort of uh, confusion अरे सीधा सीधा बोल दीजिए ना अर्जुन को नर्वस ब्रेकडाउन हो गया था डिप्रेशन में चला गया था <laughs> नहीं डिप्रेशन ओ माय गॉड माय हैंड्स आर ट्रेम्बलिंग माय हेयर आर ऑन देयर एंड आई कैन नॉट होल्ड माय बो व्हाट इज दिस दिस हैपेंस टू अस व्हेन वी आर ऑन द ब्रिंक ऑफ अ नर्वस डिप्रेशन वी गेट अ पैनिक अटैक एंड देन ओम आई कैंट मैनेज ओ दिस इज हैपनिंग दैट इज हैपनिंग वी स्टार्ट डांसिंग अराउंड दैट इज व्हाट स्टार्टेड हैपनिंग टू अर्जुन that is the place where the bhagavad gita begins the bhagavad gita does not begin when everything is nice calm quiet happy wonderful no bhagavad gita begins when everything is falling apart just imagine what would have happened if arjun would not have fought it is shown in some uh, episodes of mahabharat and in some text also it is written that the conversation was between sanjay the charioteer and the king dhritarashtra and then what happened sanjay says oh lord dhritarashtra it appears that your children have won even without the first arrow being shot if arjun sits they are done they will not move ahead because mind you arjun was capable of single handedly defeating the entire army which he had done in the past so it was not a question of lack of capability if it was like the son of virat who had gone for the first time to war eh, he was uh, making all tall claims and arjun as brihannada was his charioteer and he was making tall claims i'll do this i'll do that i'll do that the uh, i'll bring the 
uh, upper cloth of this, all that stuff. But the moment he started coming and he saw, oh my God, they, they, these, these are the people I have to fight with. And he was, he actually ran away from the, that was not the case with Arjun. He was very capable. It was at that time that Arjun caught hold of him and said, Shalo, I will fight. And single-handedly, without anybody's help, not even having a proper charioter with him, he defeated the Kaurava army. So, capability is not the question. Capability is there. But the question is in here. Many of you would have heard of Shakespeare. And there's a very famous uh, phrase to do be or not to be. To be or not to be. That is the question. And this was the dilemma of Hamlet. What was his story? His father had been murdered. His uncle took over. He married his mother. Now, as a son, he wanted to avenge his father. But if he avenges his father, his mother becomes a widow once again. If he avenges his father, his own uncle is, he is killing. What do I do? Should I or shouldn't I? Should I or shouldn't I? It was in this dilemma that he kept on wallowing and going in and out and in and out and he could not know what to do. In the end, what did he do? He committed suicide. He could not know what to do and he committed suicide. That is what Arjun was also about to do. Maybe not physical suicide, but for a warrior who was world class, world number one, to run away from war, that is worse than suicide. Once your reputation is in tatters, you are nowhere. So, he was on the brink of suicide. And at that time, what was the difference between Arjuna and Hamlet? Arjuna had Krishna. Arjuna had Krishna. And who is Krishna? In this role, let us not uh, look at Krishna as the uh, Yogeshwar Krishna. In fact, we should look at him as Yogeshwar Krishna, not as Bhagwan Krishna. Guru. He brought about the knowledge and opened the eye of wisdom. That is what Gita is. So when I have a problem, should I do this? Should I not do this? Is this correct? Is this not correct? What to do? What not to do? I am having so much of conflict. That is the time we have to start implementing the principles of Gita. Not reading. Reading is not sufficient. How to begin? That's a different story. But we have to start implementing those principles. And what is it that started? When? How did everything start? Arjun went on and went on and went on and went on. Kept on saying, oh, this is a problem, that is a problem, that is a problem, that is the problem, that is the problem. Huh? And he kept getting stuck in the you know, quicksand of the mind, mind and its mental tendencies till the time he really realized, okay, now the water is going above the bridge. And then he seeks help. He says, oh, Krishna, please help me. And Krishna keeps smiling. So he says, please help me. Still keeps smiling. In the end, he says, shishya steham shadhimam tvam prapannam. I am your disciple. I have surrendered to you. Then he begins. And what are the first words? They are not words of 
love and compassion oh dear arjun my f- dear friend you are in a bad shape come 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 let's sit no he rebukes him ashochananva shochastvam pragna vadanshta bhasha se you are speaking of stuff which even a fool should not speak but you are speaking as if you are a great pandit you are giving all sorts of logic and reasoning so he gives him a left right center and then starts opening his point then we come to what is the second chapter the sankhya second yoga. chapter is sankhya yoga what does sankhya mean at the end of the second chapter there is a hint sanjay says to dhritarashtra this is what was spoken by sankhya this uh, I, i think it's at the end of first chapter sorry by sankhya krishna is known as sankhya why sankhya means samyak khyayate iti sankhya the one or that which knows what is correct appropriate samyak it is appropriate and correct khyayate knows samyak khyayate iti sankhya so is it same as sthita pragna uh sthita pragna is a slightly different thing yeah, here sthita pragna means that you are in the state somebody comes and abuses you okay you maintain your calm and you know what to do what not to do you know there is a saying many times they say that if you want a person to go to the left purposely push him to the right and out of uh, rebelliousness he is going to jump to the left no i am not going to do that you are pushing me to the right but i am going to observe what is appropriate what is not appropriate once i know what is appropriate not appropriate i will behave that way if you flatter me oh dear so nice so nice no 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 i will maintain my focus my knowledge and i will not deviate left right or center that is what sthita pragna is samyak khyayate means one who has the correct knowledge now i see my grandfather i see my guru i see my uncles i see my brothers i see all of that and if i kill all of these people then all the social uh, uh, you know rules and regulations are going to break and then the society is going to go into bad place and my uh, ancestors are going to be in a problem oh my god oh my god oh my god this is all what arjun was saying rationalizing because he was not able to comprehend what you know all his life he came he prepared for this event go get these weapons do this do that sadhana everything all those 13 years the only thing he was doing was preparing himself for this moment and when the moment came he cracked a person who knows what correct thing is to be done is the person who will tell you how not to crack he will not tell you do this so you don't crack he will open that knowledge to you so you upgrade yourself and having upgraded yourself then you take the decision that is sankhya yog and after sankhya yog comes karma yog it is not dhyan yog it is not other stuff it is karma yog actions this is the scripture which tells you perform actions this is the scripture which tells you this is essential do it this is something which is appropriate tasmat uttishtha kaunteya yuddhaya krutanishchaya therefore please get up arjun ready for war determined for war not because he is your brother nor this that because that is the dharma that is the duty you are duty bound swadharme nidhanam shreyaha par dharmo bhayavah so is this the religion of hinduism and muslims and christians and uh, sikhs and uh, all that no 
that is not the dharma which is being spoken of we have to understand this very clearly that is the duty which i have i as a father have a duty i as a mother have a duty i as a son have a duty i as a husband have another duty now if i as a husband star uh, behaving like a son what is going to happen and if i as a father start behaving like a husband to the daughter is going to happen anarchy inappropriateness that is the dharma what is appropriate what is my duty it's not just black and white when in this situation this is my duty when in that situation that is my duty and we get caught up we get caught up so caught up that we don't know what to do and what not to do my mind your mind everybody mind gets deluded and we can't take a correct decision that is where the knowledge comes in and then the ability to do the actions what is one of the definitions of yoga according to the bhagavad gita anybody it increases the ability uh, i don't remember the sanskrit verse okay anybody some kausalam ah you have got it correct formeshu uh, kausalam yoga ha karma su kausalam and swami ji used to say he said ki actually it is not yoga it is karma yoga kaus su kausalam you karma yoga karma su kausalam but that karma is in the brackets because yoga is the yoga of action but how to do action in inaction and inaction in action that is what we have to learn that is what yoga is about that is what bhagavad gita is all about and nowhere in time is it more relevant than now don't we have information overload you have anything what do you do first google google devtaaya namo namaha right immediately google everything so everything is at the fingertips so there should be no problem but doctors find great problem because google says that you can have this symptom you can have this disease you can have this symptom you have this disease and the poor patient does not know when when will this symptom function in which disease they get scared they get uh, misled that is a big problem and so therefore it is very essential that the correct knowledge has to be brought out step by step for the first 11 chapters bhagwan kept telling arjun tasmat uttishtha kaunteya please get up and fight please get up and fight and then at the 11th chapter what does he do she says ye ladka to manne wala nahi hai usko thoda sa shock dena padega and he gives virat darshan vishwarup darshan then arjun oh my god oh i see everybody here even this person that person he is dying he is getting born everything is happening so who is the doer who is the... he said yes my dear that is what i was trying to tell you all this time and when he kept on seeing then he said oh my god i can't handle it anymore and then krishna comes back to saumya roop and after that what is the bhak- yoga which comes after the Vish- virata roop vishwaroop darshan bhakti yoga bhakti yoga bhakti comes in when you get that experience and then you move ahead after that it goes to kundalini yoga and where does it end 15th chapter purushottam yoga is kundalini yoga and where does it end in the 18th chapter moksha sanyasa 
Moksha Sanyasa Yoga. So what does Moksha Sanyasa mean? What does moksha mean? Relieving of uh, getting feeling. rid of the bondages. Getting rid of the bondages. What do you mean? You were in, you know, shackles. you were shackled and I have released the shackles. So what are these shackles? They are again of the mind. There's a very interesting and nice story. You know, at one time, Swamiji used to say about this many times. He said that uh, there was a uh, Arab fellow, very wealthy and wise person, and he had his uh, assistant. And uh, they were going here. They had one horse and a camel. So they were going, and there was a lot of uh, storm, dust storm, and all that. So they somehow managed to put their tent. But he said, he came very scared and running that uh, he said, what happened? The young boy said, sir, you know, the rope and the stake, which we used for putting the camel and the horse at night that, you know, due to the storm, it has gone. I don't know what to do. I mean, they will all run away and then we will be nowhere. He was, you know, panicking. This person said, Acha, okay, no problem. Do one thing, catch hold of the uh, horse, pat it, make it wait. Do all the actions what you are doing. Hammer the stake down, move it and check it is happening. Then act as if you have put the rope around his neck, pull him, tie it round, and then pat him. And tell him, stay here comfortably. We'll meet you tomorrow. Everything what you do every day. Obediently, he did it. And at night, you know, after every few minutes, he would be looking out of from the tent. And the horse was standing over there, eating the grass or whatever. I was feeling, wow. My master must have done some, you know, mantar tantar. And has... Uh, got the horse under a spell. So he was very happy and in the morning he got up, everything happy. He told, oh, they are here, etc. And then he said, okay, chalo, pack up, let's go. And when he started going, he was pulling the horse and the horse was not ready to move. He was pulling the horse and the horse is not ready to move. He said, sir, problem. Kya hua? He said, no, the horse is not ready to move. So he asked him, did you untie the horse? Untie? But there's no rope. Didn't you tie him last night? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I acted as if I... So then please act as if you are untying. So the moment that was done, the horse started walking even before, without anybody telling. That is the bondage. There was no rope. But the horse, due to his previous experience, felt that there is a rope. And without even observing or understanding, he acted as if he was tied. And when there is no rope, he was not able to move ahead. Now, the horse is not going to, uh, you know, uh, play tricks with the master. That is the mind. It is this mind which gets tied up in all the funny uh, activities which we bind it with. That is the moksha. So then you should have said moksha yoga. Why is he saying moksha sannyasa yoga? What does sannyas mean? To, uh, to get rid of desires? No. Samnyas. Sannyas means samyak nyasaha. Again that word samyak. So what is a nyas? Observing? Nyas, no, nyas is a trust. So, you know, uh, this, it's, uh, it's like when we say this is a charitable trust. Dharmartha nyas hai. So, it is a charity, it's, it's a trust. 
And what does a trust do? Suppose Swamiji is to say this. Suppose I have 100 rupees. I can do whatever I do, want with this 100 rupees. But the moment I put that 100 rupees in a trust, that the, the rules of the trust apply to those 100 rupees. I have donated it, but I no longer have property rights over this. What happens then? Whatever are the objectives of the trust, according to that, is to be done. Once we have this body, this mind, the everything which we have, when we put it into a trust in an appropriate, proper direction to be utilized for one, two, three, four objectives. You know, in any trust, there are objectives. <clears throat> and when they do audit, they check. Do we have some chartered accountant with us? They would tell us. They will tell, he, oh, there is, you know, there's an audit objection because this expense is not matching the objective. It is not there in the objective. And then there's big time problem, which means that what you have is first moksha has been released from all these bondages. And after being released from the bondages, it is now being put to specific use for the benefit of mankind here and hereafter. That is sannyas. So, moksha sannyas yogaha. So, having removed all those bondages, then I don't start doing whatever I want, but I work in a specific direction. Not because I wish or I think or this, that, the other. No, because that is what is expected. That is what is needed. That is what is the thing to be done. That is the swadharma, if we can say. That is moksha sannyasa. And that is the culmination of the Bhagavad Gita. Once we are able to do that, everything is achieved. That is important. Aham tva sarva pape bhyo. I will, that's what Bhagavan tells in the end, I will get rid of all your vices. You had started with those virtues and vices. We don't have to get rid of those virtues and vices. In the end, he says, don't worry. Just surrender to me. It was not Yada Vasudeva, Vasudeva Putra Devaki Nandan Krishna, which was he was speaking. It was Yogeshwar Krishna, that highest Chetana form of consciousness. Surrender to that and everything just becomes proper. That is the culmination of yoga. So, <coughs> to be or not to be is the question. That is where we start. And where do we end? Nashto moham smrutir labdhva. All my delusions have been rent asunder. Ah, now everything is clear. And I have understood what to do. Knowing this in his heart, Arjun followed the dictum of Krishna. Not because Krishna told him, you better do it or else. No. Krishna told, look, this is how it is, that is how it is, that is how it is. You decide. I have told you everything. Guhyat, guhyataram. Everything which is secret and even more than that, I have all presented it to you. Placed it open. Now, you take a call. It's your call. Knowledge allows you always to take a call. Knowledge does not bind you. Knowledge empowers you. That is what Bhagavad Gita is about. Empowering ourselves. So that we can understand what is correct, what is not correct. What is appropriate, what is inappropriate. When I am on the brink of suicide, what is it that I should do? And then, how do I progress 
step by step. That is yoga. And in today's times, if there is any problem, it is only in here. It is in the mind. How can you train the mind? So as long as our mind is untrained, as long as our mind is fickle and jumping like a monkey, Gita will always be relevant. And not only Gita will be relevant, but its application in this manner, in practical life. Don't think, is it a text of Vedanta? Is it a text of uh, Vishishta Advaita Vedanta? Is it, Adv is it Bhakti? Is it this? Don't worry about that. Worry about what he is telling and apply it in your life. That is the most important. Otherwise, if you are just going to have an armchair discussion, that is not what Gita is about. When you are in the war, you cannot you know, make all those things. He is there in front of you. One split second, you are dead. No second chances. It is at that time that you have to make the decision. So, you have to act. That is the interpretation which Swamiji gave. And I feel that for us, that is the interpretation which is most essential. Because all of us at different points of time are in the role of Arjun. We are having lots of problems this way or the other. How do we overcome them? This is the way which I feel is most appropriate. Because here you don't have to apply too much of philosophy, this, that, the other. Everything comes very simply. So the message is in karma yoga mostly. Uh, yeah, you can say so. Okay, thank you, Swami. Uh, while we are at uh, this, karma, uh, you see, it's not just karma yoga. Karma yoga with sankhya yoga. Because we need to have that, and then along with that, there is another definition of yoga given in Bhagavad Gita. Just same as. They say, yoga ha karma su kaushalam. They say, samatvam yoga uchyate. Equipoise. What you spoke of, sthita pradnya. Equipoise. Okay, things are going bad. Everything is cracking. Okay, fair enough. I will still maintain my balance. And everything is beautiful. I am having all the luxuries in the world. Okay, no problem. To be able to maintain the same state of mind here and there. Many times difficulties don't break a man. It is the luxuries which break a man. So maintaining our equipoise. Doing actions with knowledge. That is the message of yoga. And what is karma yoga? That also Swamiji had spoken beautifully. Four things. You have to do an action fast, accurate, correct, perfect. Four things. Suppose you are asked to clean, do sweeping in one area. It's not that, oh, I have to do it. See, this is uh, my worship. This is everything. So I have to do it nicely. So I'm doing very slowly, very, very carefully. And I'm uh, taking five hours to do a small patch. No, it has to be done fast. But when you are doing it fast, it has to be done accurate. You have that area, you have to work in that. Not that you are doing a little here, a little there, a little. No, it has to go. Then it has to be correct. If suppose there is, you have to do sweeping and then mopping. If you do start doing mopping first and there's a lot of dust, what is going to happen? It's all going to go haywire. So, accurate. Correct. Then perfect. I need to, if in one sweep, I can do this much area, then in one sweep, let me not do half of it. Let there be perfection that nobody will do it better than what I have done because that is the best way to do. This is what we need to do. And once we have this in mind, then it does not matter if I am doing 
sweeping or if i'm cutting vegetables in the kitchen or if i'm sitting on the computer and uh, planning or if i'm teaching or if i'm taking care of patients or if i'm doing anything these four things come in my aim is not the action my aim is how i perform the action because i am training my mind the action is secondary of course it has to have an importance but the most important thing is the mind i need to train the mind and you can train it on anything doesn't have to be that uh, you know i am a very big uh, officer so i will only do some very you know high five work no that is again an obstacle that needs to be broken whatever i have to be doing it has to be done in this four manners you do this you are moving ahead and then maintain the equipoise just these two things and things will move that's a great message mom ji uh, but we are already at 8:30 my questions are uh, still remaining but i am sure uh, our audience will have more questions uh, so i will ask one question one last one for the day maybe we can have a bhagavad gita session to sometime uh, you know if uh, if time permits next conversation or something we can plan on that um, Uh, but uh, i i request all the audience to keep uh, giving their uh, responses in the chat window uh, even if you don't have a question maybe you can summarize today's session or you know one important takeaway that you are taking from this session if you could put it in the chat window uh, that will be very nice um, uh, so while we are at that i will wait for a minute for uh, others if they have any questions please unmute yourselves and ask otherwise swami ji can we take one question of mine for the last time today uh so then if we take a question of yours then that means there is no question left for the next round right no there are i mean <laughs> questions will keep coming yeah. no i think uh, we are already at 8:30 if there is a question from the audience we can take that uh, sure. and most important thing is we need to remember that tomorrow is geeta jayanti tomorrow is the day when this event actually took place 5700 odd years ago so it is a very important moment and i would suggest that tomorrow on the occasion of bhagavad gita jayanti please pick up the book of bhagavad gita and if you can chant one chapter if you can't listen to the chapter if you can't do that also read the translation let that go in i'm sure with uh, bhagavad gita uh, and youtube and all that you can easily get if you don't know how to chant you can just listen to the close your eyes and listen don't apply too much mind let it just sink in and then difference will take place i think that is something which is you spoke of takeaways this is the most important takeaway let us start applying geeta in our life one shloka every day 700 shlokas in 2 years you have applied geeta in your life and you have reached moksha sanyas you have gone beyond and there is no need to come back again done swami ji a quick uh, uh, technical question uh-huh. is it, is it uh... is it advised to memorize the 700 shlokas or or how does one go about it yeah. you see uh, to begin with it depends like at what age you are like at your age i would say that uh, suppose i i know that you already have done so much of swadhyay so uh, not just for you but i am speaking taking your example if you are starting studying uh, and knowing about geeta at the age of 50 or or something like that when you are in your adulthood then first read a little chant a little and let it go in but if it is for children it is best that they by heart it and no matter what everybody should by heart it why why should you memorize it 
there is a beautiful sloka pustakastu ya vidya parahasta gatam dhanam karya kale samutpanne nasa vidya nasadhanam pustakastu ya vidya that knowledge which is there in the books parahasta gatam dhanam your money which has gone into another person's hand karya kale when the time comes of its requirement comes up then karya kale samutpanne when the requirement comes up nasa vidya nasadhanam you don't have knowledge you don't have, you will not be carrying the book with you it should come spontaneously from within so therefore yes the ideal thing is to memorize it but just memorizing it as a parrot mm. is not sufficient memorize it is imbibe it in also that is what we must do okay. definitely swami ji namo narayana namo narayana shali so with this let us conclude today's session and uh, then we can meet tomorrow no we we meet tomorrow on our uh, usual mantra booster session. session and other sessions but on in this uh, episode we will meet next uh, when is the next one third, third friday third friday okay very good very good namo narayan swami ji namo narayan everyone thank you so much for giving me this opportunity Uh, we will have to have a swadhyaya about bhagavad gita also i request you to plan something about that that's a good one so let us conclude with shanti pat please sit in your comfortable meditative posture hands on your knees in dhyan or chin mudra head neck shoulders back all in a straight line eyes and mouth gently closed bring back the same image you had chosen in the beginning of the session install it at your eyebrow center and maintaining your awareness on that let us chant the mantra om three times together followed by the shanti pat taking in a deep breath om असतो मद्गम तमसो ज्योतिर्गम मृत्योर्मा मृत गमय शातिर्भवर्ण मंगल लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्तु ओम त्र्यंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाकमिव बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओं शाति 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 हैंड्स इन प्रणाम मुद्रा माता च पिता बंधु सखा ईव विद्या द्रविण सर्व मम देव सर्व मम देव सर्व मम देव देव हरि ओ हरि ओम सत नारायण जेंटली रब यू पाम सेकेंड टीचर
place him on the closed ice. Experience the warmth radiating from the palms to your eyes, to the brain, to the whole body. And then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Ariyom, Sat, Namunarayana.